I think, you know, obviously we're, we're on the back of already a very substantial depreciation of the yen, but I think the BOJ announcement was a game changer um, in, a, in a lot of senses. Uh, primarily because for the first time I think we're, we're going to start seeing the BOJ really crowding out domestic Japanese investors uh, from the JGB market. Remember this is how QE is supposed to work. It's really pushing investors from those markets into other markets. And once domestic Japanese uh, life insurance companies, for example, start moving overseas, those types of move, uh, moves are typically very significant for the currency. So that will add to pressure on the yen. So I think mm -hmm. e even considering as much as we've weakened already, the course is still lower. You know, for Alan, yen. let me ask you, do you think this is going to end well for Japan? A lot of people are watching Japan obviously very closely because they're saying there's some similarities between what Japan's doing and what we're doing right here at home. How do you think this ends for Japan? Are they going to generate the growth they're hoping to get? Well, that's always been the question. People were always saying that America could turn into, into Japan where they had that lost decade. Um, looking at the charts, and I know that's what I try and get us to do and not focus on the news and not try and analyze the politics of this. If you look at the charts, the major sale has already occurred like you talked about. So from a trading standpoint, I'm looking at this 105 level. We've gone through it on the downside for the FXJ, the Japanese Yen ETF. I'm looking to lean on 100, buy a deep in the money call here, and look for a bit of a turnaround in the long term. We've had an extreme, extreme move in a short period of time, but the overall trend has still been positive, and I don't think it's completely broken just yet. Ah, interesting. All right, we're going to talk some more with you, but first over to Chris. Let's look at it from a technical perspective with you, Chris Devere. Yeah, so when we look at the technicals here, like you guys said, we've obviously had you know, a very large run up here since about mid-November. We recently tested this 55-day SMA, found a lot of support into it there on the 93 level. Consequently, we've broken above uh, some new 2013 highs here, right around this 9750-ish level. Now, what we want to be looking for going forward is we have a long-term Fibonacci retracement level from the whole financial collapse here in 07 all the way down to 2011 here, coming in roughly at about 100. We also have those 2009 highs coming in roughly at about 102. So this could be some formidable resistance as we continue to go forward here. Uh, furthermore, when we talk a little bit about uh, when some of these markets tend to, you know, peak out, and you guys were talking a little bit about earlier, you know, that April factor. Well, sure enough, dollar yen has the same thing here. Last four years, April's marked the high consecutively. Okay, Vasily, uh, let me get back over to you. Um, what, what's the biggest challenge right now uh, for this currency as you see it? Well, I, I think the biggest the biggest challenge is is what the you know what the Bank of Japan is doing. I mean, I think uh, you know we tended to underplay um, the intention for the Bank of Japan to shift to a completely new regime. I think from the beginning. Um, and it's remarkable, I think, given uh, how expectations evolved that the BOJ did over deliver um, mm -hmm. at this meeting. So I think, uh, I think that's, the main, that's the main message. Now, I think the problem is if that depreciation <laughs> becomes particularly fast or, a, or particularly uncontrolled, this could bring other headaches in terms of the, the, the cost of the economy, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, perhaps import prices rising too fast. Um, and actually can in some ways hurt the economy more than they help the economy. But I don't think we're there yet. Uh, yeah. I, I think the Japanese authorities are pretty happy with what's going on right now with the yen. Yeah, Alan, it's interesting. I was actually at a conference on Wednesday, and we were talking about this very subject. And I asked one economist, is this, in fact, a full-fledged currency war? As you watch all these banks, uh, central banks around the world, print money. Um, and he said right. to me, it's not really a, a currency war. Rather, we're looking at a growth war, a war for growth. People are so desperate. Countries are so desperate to get some kind of growth into their economies. I guess I would just question, it doesn't seem to be working. We look at the jobs numbers today here in the U.S., despite all this money printing. We look at what's going on in Japan right now. It doesn't feel like the economies are necessarily taking off on this. Um, is this a prescription for problems? Well, it very well could be. Um, looking at the so-called money printing here in the U.S. for the dollar, the dollar's here at, at very, very high levels. We've been, you know, we've gotten to yearly highs here just recently. But isn't in that the just because we're, we're, we're the, uh, the best game in town these days? Well, it's all relative. Right. There's been a race to the bottom. That is, that is correct. Um, but as an, as a tra from a trading standpoint here, I'm looking at the, uh, the, the yen ETF, uh -huh. uh, the FXJ, as an investment, not a trade, as an investment. Buying a January call that gives us uh, a good deal of time, nine months of time, 
for development, buying something deep in the money that's going to act like the ETF itself, and looking for some recovery. Now, this moves inversely to the to the uh, to the yen as far as the forex goes, but looking for some recovery here after this you know this extended move down, looking for this to bounce back up, and it's the break even on it's only about a dollar away. So I think there's some good potential for profit there mm -hmm. over the longer period instead of looking at a short-term trade and trying to figure out all this noise. Yeah, good to hear that from you because, you know, Alan, you're often in the short-term uh, game. So uh, going uh, for a little bit longer uh, term there. So good to see all you guys. Thanks so much to the gang. Here's a cheat for you on the end. You heard Vasily say he's buying on these dips. You heard Chris saying he expects the dollar and the euro to continue strengthening against the yen. Alan Nuckman sees the yen heading higher by January.